Here's your wrestling news for October 25th, 2020. And your headlines for today include Top 5 Hell in a Cell Rumors 2020 Matches to be added, potential returns, and more. Vince McMahon removes item from WWE's banned moves list. Paul Heyman accidentally reveals handwritten note with orders from Vince McMahon. WWE changes up several NXT superstar names. What is the nature of Abaddon's injury that led to her hospitalization? Ken Shamrock wants match against Goldberg. Former WWE wrestler wins world title at Bound for Glory. Tonight, WWE will host its 12th annual Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, which will once again provide chaos and mayhem inside the barbaric structure. The fourth pay-per-view inside the Thunderdome, there's a lot to know before we enter Hell tonight. And here's five Hell in a Cell 2020 rumors you need to know. Number 5. More matches to be added At this time, there's just a handful of matches scheduled for tonight's show, with the focus being on the three Hell in a Cell matches. With the WWE, Universal, and SmackDown women's titles all being defended inside the cell, there's not been much time to book other matches, but according to rumors, we'll see plenty more additions to the card. There's plenty of storylines going around currently as Seth Rollins, the Mysterios, and Murphy could appear, and The Fiend could face a Retribution member. There's no tag team title matches booked either, which is interesting considering Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler were unable to defend their titles at Clash of Champions, so they could be a late addition to the show. Raw Women's Champion Asuka is also without a challenger tonight, and whilst the five matches already confirmed for the show will definitely take up a large portion of tonight's event, fans can expect more matches to be added to fill the show's runtime. Number 4. Building Towards Survivor Series one match that's also been rumored to take place will see Bobby Lashley defend his United States title against Ricochet, though fans shouldn't expect a title change. Instead, recent rumors have suggested that this match is to highlight that Ricochet's feud with the Hurt Business is far from over, but could also build to a Survivor Series match pitting the Hurt Business against Retribution. With the next pay-per-view set for November 22nd, the WWE will need to start building to matches fast. And while Retribution seem to have stepped into a feud with The Fiend as of late, their issues with the Hurt Business are still far from over. With two multi-man teams already on the Raw roster, the WWE would be foolish not to consider a Hurt Business Retribution match next month. And if Ricochet isn't the one to take the US title from Lashley, then Mustafa Ali could fire a huge shot by capturing the star-spangled strap from the Hurt Business instead. Number 3. The Miz to become Mr. Money in the Bank On the go-home edition of SmackDown, The Miz and Otis finally had their day in court, and whilst the segment reportedly caused chaos backstage due to rewrites and so much time being dedicated to Law and Otis, the not-so-honorable judge John Bradshaw Layfield eventually ruled in the A-listers' favor. Accepting a bribe from Miz, JBL decreed that Otis will put his money in the bank contract on the line tonight, and there's been plenty of rumors suggesting that it'll be Miz leaving with the briefcase. In recent months, it's been made abundantly clear that WWE have no plans for Otis to cash in, and given that Roman Reigns is on the roll of his career as Universal Champion, very few people expect WWE to cut the legs out of his heel turn by having him lose the title to what's essentially a comedy character. Miz winning the briefcase would be much more believable, given that Miz is already a former Mr. Money in the Bank and former world champion, and with the A-lister on Raw, he could cash in on Drew McIntyre or Randy Orton as soon as tonight, if he wins the Money in the Bank contract. Number 2. There will be plenty of returns tonight With legends like Jeff Jarrett and Jerry Lawler confirmed for WWE Hell in a Cell 2020 kickoff show, there's going to be plenty of big names around tonight but according to rumors, there will also be plenty of returns during the show. Fans will remember Brock Lesnar returning to TV during the 2018 Hell in a Cell event, and whilst the eight-time world champion isn't rumored for tonight's show, the person who is rumored is also no stranger to championship gold. Instead, Charlotte Flair is rumored to return, given that Asuka has no opponent for her Raw Women's title, and fans haven't seen her since she was written off TV with a kayfabe injury by Nia Jax in June, which has allowed her to undergo a small surgical procedure she was putting off. Though it was rumored that Charlotte wasn't returning until the 2021 Royal Rumble, the Raw women's division desperately needs the Queen, 
and the fact that she was drafted despite not being active also hints at her impending return. Edge is the only other name that could reasonably return tonight as his nemesis Randy Orton challenges WWE Champion Drew McIntyre for the title, and given that the rated R superstar is no stranger to the cell himself, he too could be returning. Number 1. Paul Heyman Will Manage the Usos Roman Reigns has made it clear that if he defeats Jey Uso in tonight's Hell in a Cell I Quit match, then all of his family members will have to fall in line with Jimmy and Jay accepting the Universal Champion as the head of their family. Failing to do so will mean the Usos and their family will be kicked from the Samoan dynasty, and it's been rumored that this could mean the Usos will join Reigns and turn heel in the process. As special counsel to the tribal chief, Paul Heyman could then manage the Usos if they turned heel, something that Jay seems open to, as he told the Gorilla Position podcast recently, That man is a creative genius too. That's why he's still in the game for so long. I would love for him to manage us one day too. Could the Samoan dynasty remain intact after tonight's show by having the Usos side with their cousin? We'll find out in just a few hours time. Tonight's Hell in a Cell event isn't the only big story around though, so here's your news for October 25th. Now we all know that Vince McMahon has a list of banned moves fans won't see, but now one maneuver is getting a comeback. On SmackDown, Seth Rollins hit Murphy with the buckle bomb, and online, several fans noticed the architect using the same banned move that ended Sting's career when the two faced off in 2015. During Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer noted that Vince has removed the buckle bomb from the company's banned moves list, hence why Rollins used it this week. Kyrie Sane was the most recently injured star thanks to a botched buckle bomb earlier this year. And given that the move ended Sting's career, fans probably shouldn't expect to see it frequently, even though it's now unbanned. Speaking of SmackDown, Paul Heyman had plenty to say on Talking Smack this week, and some of his words came directly from Vince McMahon. During the show, Heyman held up his papers to the camera for a brief moment, and fans who paused at the right time were able to see a message to the special counsel on the other side. Flipping the image around showed that the message was, identify each consequence if Roman loses, and was signed Vince, confirming it was McMahon who gave this special order. Heyman did name every consequence of the tribal chief losing tonight, and as usual, was excellent on the mic doing so, and it's clear that the chairman has a special interest in tonight's universal title match. NXT Next and this week, several members of the gold brand roster received new names. On October 20th, WWE filed trademarks for many new names, which are Akeem Young, Ivy Nile, Zion Quinn, Tony Modra, and Odyssey Jones. Daniel Vidot has already updated his social media profile to reflect his new ring name of Zion Quinn, whilst Omari Palmer has also changed his socials to Odyssey Jones. Sidney Bateman will now be known as Akeem Young, and whilst we don't know who Ivy Nile or Tony Modra will be, the company obviously has plans for using those names for someone down the line. AEW News Next and we previously covered that next week's show has already been taped, and that during that taping, Abaddon suffered a nasty injury during her match with Tay Conti. We now have more details about what happened, as during Wrestling Observer Radio, Dave Meltzer said, the Abaddon thing, I don't know, but she was hospitalized, and it was serious. She will make a full recovery, and I don't even know what it was for sure. The impression is she got nailed in the throat, but I'm not even sure if the match is airing on television or not, but I'm thinking that it's not. It's possible that the match may be taken out of next week's episode, and we here are wishing the living dead girl a very speedy recovery. Impact Wrestling news now, as Ken Shamrock was recently inducted into the company's Hall of Fame, but that doesn't mean he's done in the ring. While speaking on the Angle podcast, Shamrock said he still wants to work against Goldberg, who does have some years left in his current WWE contract. Shamrock explained that he feels the Goldberg character in him would mesh well in the ring due to their tendency to work stiff, and said he's confident they'll one day have this dream match. Shamrock's induction was a huge event for him, as he was inducted by The Rock, whilst Mick Foley and Bret Hart also spoke highly of him, and time will tell whether he gets the Goldberg match he wants. More from Impact now, as Eric Young and Rich Swan main evented Bound for Glory, and a new champion was crowned. 
In the end, it was a Phoenix splash off the top rope that gave Swan the win and the Impact World Championship, as the locker room poured into the ring to celebrate with the new champion. Interestingly, Swan's wife Sue Young had an equally impressive night, winning the knockouts title in the match before the main event, as Bound for Glory 2020 will be a night for the happy couple to remember. And we're ending with AEW news as Le Dinner Debonair pleased a ton of fans and, unsurprisingly, Jim Cornette didn't like it. Saying the segment ruined MJF and calling Chris Jericho a fat canned ham, Cornette's comments reached Y2J, who had some fun of his own. When a fan asked who came up with the musical number, Jericho said it was all Cornette's idea, even tagging the Smoky Mountain Wrestling boss. Hopefully Cornette hasn't muted Jericho on Twitter yet so he sees this pop up in his mentions, but we're sure he won't be happy about the former AEW World Champion having fun at his expense.